and welcome back. It's good to see everyone. I hope everyone had a great spring break. We have made it to week 10 for our basic business statistics course, and we're going to be talking this week about continuous probability distributions. Now, you may recall from before spring break, or maybe you don't recall because it was before spring break, we talked about discrete probability distributions, and the thing that distinguishes a continuous from a discrete probability distribution is whether or not the random variable can take on a single value. With a discrete probability distribution, we could ask questions like, what is the probability that you will sell three cars? Or what is the probability that exactly five people will show up in this space of time? With a continuous probability distribution, a continuous random variable will take on values within an interval of a probability density function. For instance, what is the probability that a score will be between two values? Here's some examples of these continuous random variables for a continuous probability distribution. If we're looking at a half gallon of milk, the maximum that might be put into that half gallon would be 64.1 ounces. And so the number of ounces in the container might take on any value between zero and 64.1. We could even go out to decimal places if we needed to. Or if you're operating an ice cream store, the time between customer arrivals in minutes, and this X value can assume any value greater than zero or equal to zero. With discrete probability distributions, the values always take on a whole number or integer value. Last week, I introduced a brand new business. It was Dante's Divine Comedy Store. And I so enjoyed that illustration that I thought I'd make up a new business for this week and hopefully new businesses for each week for our business statistics class. And so this week, we're going to use a cruise line as our example. And all of the illustrations that I'll be doing for the uniform distribution, the normal distribution, and exponential distribution will all come from this example using the cruise line. The first of the distributions that we want to explore is the uniform probability distribution. This is one of our continuous probability distributions. The uniform distribution is used when the intervals that we are measuring have an equal likelihood of occurring. You may get to class by parking at one of the parking garages and then taking the shuttle from the parking garage to your classroom. When you arrive at the shuttle station, many times, most of the time, the shuttle isn't there. You have to wait. And so what is the probability that the shuttle is going to show up in the next minute? Or what is the probability that the shuttle will show up at minute five or at minute eight? One thing to keep in mind is the shuttles run on a schedule. One of the shuttles runs on a 15 minute schedule. So we could calculate the probability of showing up in any part of that interval of 15 minutes. Intervals greater than 15 minutes would have a probability of zero. Or let's say it's summertime and you go to a baseball game and someone asks, how long do you think you'll be at the game? When do you think you'll be home? And you have to make a guess as how long the game will last. Well, you may know the shortest time of most games, the longest time, and the probability that the game tonight will go any particular amount of time in that interval is equal. There's no way of knowing whether it will be two hours and five minutes or two hours and 30 minutes. The probability of any of those occurrences is equally likely. Or the time that it takes for a mechanic to change your oil. We know what will be greater than zero, but we could, talk, we could start with a minimum and a maximum value. It will be any time within that interval. When the random variable can take on any value within the interval, that is where we're going to use a uniform probability distribution. The probability equals the area under the graph. So the probability of the shuttle arriving within five minutes is the same as it would be for the, for the shuttle arriving within eight minutes. And let me clarify that because it's important whether we say the shuttle arriving at minute five or at minute eight versus up to five minutes or up to eight minutes. Because if we're talking about a space of time from zero to five minutes, that might be a larger portion of the distribution. And in that case, 
the range of values for the probability is proportional to that interval's length. If the shuttle runs on an eight minute time frame, every eight minutes a shuttle will arrive, then the probability of it showing up between minutes zero and four will be 50% or 0 0.50. These are the formulas that we'll be using. The first is the formula for the distribution. It's one over B minus A. The second is the formula for the expected value, which is the mean of a probability distribution. And the third is the formula for the variance. You can take the square root of the variance and still get the standard deviation. So here's our first example. There's a cruise that runs from Houston to Cancun. And I've discovered a lot about cruising coming up with this example. I now know that it is 688 nautical miles between Houston and Cancun. I also learned that cruise ships on the average travel at 21 nautical miles per hour, or 21 knots, which is equivalent to about 24 miles per hour on a land equivalent. I made up this uniform probability distribution in which the shortest time that you might get to the but get to, to Cancun would be 30 hours, and the longest time would be 36 hours. But the probability of arriving at any interval within that time frame is equal. What is the probability, therefore, of arriving in 32 hours? In order to answer that question, we need to know how many intervals there are. And I put these into one-hour intervals, so there are six intervals. Therefore, the probability distribution would be, if you're answering the question, what's the probability we would arrive in 32 hours, it's going to be the same. The function is 1 over b minus a, which is the lar largest minus the smallest value, which is 1 over 6, because there are six intervals. Therefore, the probability of 32 hours would be 1, 6. The probability of 34 would be 1, 6. Any interval within that time frame would be exactly the same. It's 1 sixth. The mean, or the expected value, would be add the two extremes together. So 36 plus 30 divided by 2, the average is 33, which is right in the middle of our distribution between 30 and 36. And the variance would be b minus a squared divided by 12. In this case, it's 36 over 12, or 3. You can take the square root of that value, that variance value, and get a standard deviation. So you may discover a weakness in my example, and that is that, well, isn't it possible that we could arrive faster than 30 hours, or it might take longer than 36 hours? And the answer in this example is yes. So go back to that example with the shuttle, where time zero is where the previous shuttle leaves, and Eight minutes is where the next shuttle arrives, which means that we are bounded between those two numbers. It can't be less than zero. It can't be greater than eight, because as soon as the next shuttle shows up, then the time starts again. So use this as an example, uh, although I understand that there is a limitation to the example that I chose. So let's apply this now looking at a range of time. We ask the question, what is the probability of a cruise time between 30 and 33 hours. So for that, we look at our number of intervals. And we see that 30 to 33 is half of the range of the intervals. So we could use this probability between 30 and 33. Each interval has a probability of 1 sixth. There are three intervals, 3 sixth. Therefore, the total probability would be 0.5. What's the likelihood that we will be able to get there between 30 and 36 hours? About half of the time we would arrive within that time frame. But what is the probability that we would arrive in, a, in 38 hours? Assuming the limitation is between 30 and 36, any probabilities outside of that range would be zero. That is our discussion of a uniform probability distribution. <laughs>